Section 38. I cannot at this place avoid a sigh. There are days when I am visited by a feeling blacker than the blackest melancholy, contempt of man. Let me leave no doubt as to what I despise, whom I despise. It is the man of today, the man with whom I am unhappily contemporaneous. The man of today, I am suffocated by his foul breath. Toward the past, like all who understand, I am full of tolerance, which is to say, generous self-control. With gloomy caution, I pass through whole millenniums of this madhouse of a world, call it Christianity, Christian faith, or the Christian church, as you will. I take care not to hold mankind responsible for its lunacies. But my feeling changes and breaks out irresistibly the moment I enter modern times, our times. Our age knows better. What was formerly merely sickly now becomes indecent. It is indecent to be a Christian today. And here my disgust begins. I look about me. Not a word survives of what was once called truth. We can no longer bear to hear a priest pronounce the word. Even a man who makes the most modest pretensions to integrity must know that a theologian, a priest, a pope of today, not only errs when he speaks, but actually lies, and that he no longer escapes blame for his lie through innocence or ignorance. The priest knows, as everyone knows, that there is no longer any god, or any sinner, or any savior, that free will and the moral order of the world are lies. Serious reflection, the profound self-conquest of the spirit, allow no man to pretend that he does not know it. All the ideas of the church are now recognized for what they are, as the worst counterfeits in existence, invented to debase nature and all natural values. The priest himself is seen as he actually is, as the most dangerous form of parasite, as the venomous spider of creation. We know our conscience now knows just what the real value of all those sinister inventions of priest and church has been, and what ends they have served, with their debasement of humanity to a state of self-pollution, the very sight of which excites loathing. The concepts, the other world, the last judgment, the immortality of the soul, the soul itself, they are all merely so many instruments of torture, systems of cruelty, whereby the priest becomes master and remains master. Everyone knows this, but nevertheless things remain as before. What has become of the last trace of decent feeling, of self-respect, when our statesmen, otherwise an unconventional class of men and thoroughly anti-Christian in their acts, now call themselves Christians and go to the communion table. A prince at the head of his armies, magnificent as the expression of the egoism and arrogance of his people, and yet acknowledging without any shame that he is a Christian. Whom then does Christianity deny? What does it call the world? To be a soldier, to be a judge, to be a patriot, to defend oneself, to be careful of one's honor, to desire one's own advantage, to be proud, every act of every day, every instinct, every valuation that shows itself in a deed, is now anti-Christian. What a monster of falsehood the modern man must be to call himself, nevertheless, and without shame, a Christian. <laughs>